Act, Richard Perno back on Monday to uh, resume hostilities from 3 till 6 every afternoon with Canberra Live. Now, for this next half hour, for a lot of this next half hour, we're going to be talking about something that's getting up the noses of quite a few people, and that's the Transport Canberra's new bus schedules, how they can seriously change the way you get to work and to school. Now, there's uh, a very uh, an excellent article written in the Canberra Times today by Michael Shoebridge. He's a, a parent of three children, and he's also Australian Strategic Policy Institute Director of Defence and Strategy. Uh, he, the, the newspaper does um, newspaper does stress that his views in the uh, today's edition are personal, but it's a, an incredible it's an incredible article. It's uh, sort of semi funny. It could be satirical in some respects because his style of writing is is very very attractive, but it's also um, it's also rather different. And uh, you'd have to have a look at it to go through it. I won't read it off right from the, the copy. But he says he was a fan of light rail. Canberra needed better public transport to not have the car-clogged roads in other cities. But that support was because I was mistakenly thought getting Canberra's children to, to and from school safely and as directly as possible would remain a core priority. Incredibly, he says that's not true under the new Moving Canberra Integrated Transport. Now, we'll talk to Michael Shoebridge a little later on in this half hour. But somebody who's been campaigning against the uh, the new bus schedules is the Shadow Transport Minister, Candace Birch. And uh, Candace is with me on the line now. Candace, good afternoon. Thanks for your time. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Now, you, did you read Michael Shoebridge's article in the Canberra Times this morning? I did, I did, and as you said, it was a very enjoyable article. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's it's quite quirky in a way, but he, yeah, he makes some a very, good way writing. very valid points, and he certainly yeah, he certainly does it in a way you, you can't you can't resist reading it to the end, and it's quite a long article. Now mm. you've been you've been campaigning on this one, of course. Save our school buses is a petition that uh, you've been that you've uh, launched earlier. What's what's happened? We spoke about this a long time ago, Candice, and it seemed like nothing yeah, much yeah. has happened. So, We've had a number of petitions on this now that we've sponsored um, for the community. Um, this is by no means the first petition. Uh, we have been campaigning heavily on it since the cuts were first announced um, and at every instance since then. Uh, so initially we saw a huge number of school buses being cut. Um, after our first petition, we did see the Minister reinstate a small number of those. Uh, but as of Monday, there are going to be 59 schools that will not have any dedicated school buses. Okay, well, we'll be talking to Michael School, uh, Michael Shoebridge, a little later this half hour, and I guess he can go through some of the things. But where, where do your main, main, op where does your main opposition lie, and, and what can you do about it as, a, as an opposition? Look, I think the first point that Michael makes in that article is incredibly valid. A lot of Canberrans have just assumed that getting kids to and from school safely would be a key priority for government. And so many parents and so many school communities are just so disappointed to see that that is not a priority for government. Uh, not only are dedicated school buses not a priority, we actually see in the new transport strategy, they come in last of all the school transport options. Uh, so the government is not supporting dedicated school buses buses at all. Um, we've heard throughout this, we've heard from hundreds and hundreds of concerned parents, concerned grandparents and concerned carers uh, who just can't imagine sending their kids to school on the public bus network um, or who don't have the public bus network as an option and so therefore without these buses uh, and at this point with the new network starting next Monday, a lot of people are telling us they, they honestly don't know what they're going to do and how they're going to get their kids to school next week. Is it too late to salvage anything out of it? Is it all done and dusted? and put away and now it's a fait accompli? No, absolutely not. I don't think it did this at all. Um, the, one of the most recent meetings with Transport Canberra and the school community, they were told that there would be a review after not, not sooner than 12 months, I believe is what they were told. Um, I think that that is too far away and there should definitely be a review before then. But I think given the success of early petitions in having some of those services restored, uh, there is definitely opportunity for the community to continue to fight on this issue and to have more of those services restored. Uh, okay, we, we speak about the petitions that, uh, that you've gathered and yeah. obviously they're quite substantial they're quite significant. What about the public consultation process? Was anybody listening while this was happening? Yes, 
So um, we continue to hear from the government that the consultation process was extensive and they got a lot of pieces of consultation and a lot of community feedback. Um, we've heard from school communities, however, that a lot of them were never informed that their school buses were going to be cut. Um, the first they started hearing about it was in the media. They never heard about it from Transport Canberra directly. And then throughout that consultation process as well, we heard from schools who just couldn't get meetings with Transport Canberra. Um, and often as well, they, they eventually got meetings after the formal consultation process had closed. Um, not only that, but in a lot of these meetings, they haven't been able to get any kind of answer as to why these buses have been cut. That's the huge question that Michael asked in his article and a lot of parents and schools are still asking is, these buses are full. These buses are full mornings and afternoons. Um, they are some of the most utilised bus services and we've had no explanation from the Minister as to why these buses have been cut. Yeah, I'm just. Well, it gets back to the, the the thing: is the government listening? And if they've had all this public consultation, it seems to me yeah. that they. It, it seems to me like it might be a sort of tokenism type thing. Would you go that far? Exactly, I would absolutely go that far. I mean, what is the point of consultation if you're not listening? And obviously they're not. What about the assembly? You've obviously brought it up in the assembly, every available occasion. Yeah. They're not listening yeah. there. I take it. <laughs> no, they're not listening there. Um, at one point last year, the minister was um, accusing us of scaremongering on this, um, which is absolutely not true. As I've said, we've heard from so many parents who are concerned and they think there is a real safety risk of sending their kids to school on public buses. Um, it's not the buses themselves, it's also the fact that they'll be expected to change it into changes and they'll be expected to walk further to and from bus stops um, at both ends of that journey. So that, that is a significant safety concern. At the beginning of last year, we had a lot of incidences reported of um, attempted abductions or suspicious activity around schools yeah. um, and so that, I think those are very valid concerns um, but for quite a period of time the Minister was accusing us of scaremongering and was refusing to acknowledge that those concerns were legitimate. Okay, I did mention, I did notice at one stage Michael Shoebridge, and we'll talk to him very shortly, but he was saying that the, at the interchanges they've got CCTV so they must be safe. Well, I'm paraphrasing what he's saying. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, exactly, exactly. And they, they're hiring a couple of additional customer service officers. Yes. Um, but again, when you're expecting children as young as six and seven years old to be navigating the public bus network, to be changing into changes and to be walking so much further to and from bus stops, um, it just, I'm, I'm just, my mind is boggled as to how the government thinks that this is a viable solution for parents. Okay, I've got to pass on an SMS that's just come in, Candice. Uh, it says, as per usual, Candice Birch tell, just tells us what we already know. Why won't you come up with an alternative plan? I could partly answer that for you, but let you, let, I'll let you have a go. <laughs> from the beginning that we are committed to providing direct services and safe services for students to get to and from school. Um, so I think that is an alternative plan. Um, that is what, if anything, at the moment before these cuts were announced, um, a lot of schools have been talking to the government trying to get additional school services. So again, that goes back to show that these buses are being utilised. Um, and without any explanation for the cuts, um, that's really the big question that the Minister still needs to answer. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we said from the beginning that we are committed to to, to providing safe and direct routes for children to get to school. Okay, I should just mention that that SMS has the, the uh, ubiquitous name of anonymous, but uh, uh, the reason I mention that, and I, I should, I'm not trying to defend you, I'm not trying to defend you against the, uh, the SMS writer, but I do know that we actually asked you on this program to, to, to reiterate on some of the concerns that you have, which then they are new because they haven't been they haven't been acted on. Well, they're not new, but they're, they're just not being addressed. And that's the reason why. And that's the reason why exactly, we're going to... Exactly. That's, that's why we're going to ask Michael Schubert to also yeah, they, talk about they his Yeah, continue column. to not be addressed. And again, nobody has answered that question from... The Minister has not answered that question of why these buses are being cut. Yes, and that's what we'd like to put to the Minister. We have put out an invitation. We're still waiting to hear back. We, uh, we hope we will, if not today, certainly on Friday before the week's out. And uh, we'd like yeah. to sort of get a yeah. bit of balance into it because we're hammering the government with two interviews in this half hour. And uh, yeah. I'd love Meg Megan to, uh, to come on the program and sort of address some of the problems or some of the issues that have been raised by yourself and uh, no doubt by Michael Shoebridge. Okay, by the way, have you travelled on the light rail yet? Uh, no, I haven't had a chance to yet, but I will definitely get out there by the end of the week. You're the shadow minister and you didn't go out last week. 
No, no, I haven't had a chance to yet. Unfortunately, like so many Canberrans, I don't live anywhere near like the light rail track um, and I don't generally have the need to travel from the city to Gungahlin. Are you looking forward to having a go at it? I am looking forward to having a go, yes. Okay, what do you think about the celebrations last week to, to mark the opening? Yeah, look, I think I think there were Canberrans that were disappointed that it was on a long weekend. Um, I know that the government was anticipating a much higher number of people than what they did end up getting. Um, in terms of the cost of it, um, there's, there's been a lot of debate as to whether or not that is a, a viable figure. Um, my biggest concerns remain around the public safety um, issues. So we've seen we've seen the uh, dash cam footage of the near misses that they have had with pedestrians and with workers along the light rail corridor. Um, and I still think that there has not been enough of a public awareness campaign or enough signage um, around the tracks to try and alert pedestrians and vehicles and cyclists and all of that as to how they can be safe around the track. Okay, I guess uh, this is a, a bit of a whipping thing, but the, uh, the, they did have a few teething problems on Monday when uh, one of the trams broke down. Uh, there was a power failure and this sort of thing. You would, you would concede, wouldn't you, Candice, that uh, with a project of this dimension, they do have teething problems. Yeah, yeah. Look, I think I think with a project this size, an infrastructure project this size, you do expect that there are some teething problems. Um, however, we did also see many months of track testing, um, so you do have to ask why these teething problems weren't figured out during the track testing phase. All right, we'll leave it there for now, but uh, good to talk to you as always, and thanks so much for your time this afternoon. No problem, thank you. Shadow Transport Minister Candice Birch. And as I mentioned, we'll talk to Michael Shoebridge, and if you do get a chance to have a look at the Canberra Times, the uh, the very...